This video is sponsored by Paperlike. Hey, what's up guys? Lucas here. Welcome to another video. Today we are going to be talking about how to start painting in Procreate for beginners. You notice that there is somebody here. This is Anya. This is my girlfriend. Hi. So she just asked me how to start painting in Procreate, how to start painting digitally. I thought maybe if she's interested in that and we are going to already go step by step through the process, maybe you guys are also interested. So. Here we are. We're gonna be painting a carrot because it's a very simple object. You guys can follow along either with your iPad or with another software. We are gonna be using Procreate, but you guys can follow along with whatever you want. Okay, so we are going to skip a couple of steps because you guys probably know how to do these ones, but you guys can follow along here in the screen. We're gonna do first a sketch, a very simple sketch for a carrot, and then we're gonna do masking. This is the method that we are going to use for this painting. Painting. and it's a very simple method. What it means is that you need a different layer for each of the segments of your drawing or each of the sections. In this case, for the carrot, you need one for the body and one for one of the leaves that later we are going to duplicate. For this painting and all of my paintings, I use my LP brushes that you guys can get down there in the description. If you get them, it's very much appreciated. For the sketch of the carrot, I use the LP2B and for the masking, I use the LP Creamy Solid. So if you got those two steps ready, then let's start with the painting. You can paint directly on this layer or you can make a clipping mask. So why don't we do two different methods so that you can see how to do it for the carrot in the same layer and for the leaf on the new one, okay? okay. So on the carrot, because we are using the same layer, you don't have to worry about anything, just have the transparency locked. And we're gonna go, and in this case, for this very soft rendering style, I recommend using the airbrush the LP Creamy Airbrush. When selecting the basic color of the elements, I recommend that you don't use the color that is all the way up there, like right here, nor something that is here or anywhere around the corners. I recommend something around this top right area of the square. Something slightly desaturated, but not completely gray. At least if you're making this cartoony bright colored style. And now, to select the right color for the shadow, we're gonna slide a little bit to the red. And I always recommend to do the shadow of everything, anything, this is not enough to change the value and the saturation. Okay. Usually just you need to change also the hue of it. Okay. So I recommend that you go a little bit down on the red. It will give vibrance to the color. Okay. It would make it much, much nicer. And now just go a little bit down in, uh, of course, saturation and in value. Imagine that there is a direction of light first, so I'm gonna illuminate my carrot like it has a light kind of in front and going towards there. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just go with a bigger brush on the lower side, try to make it big enough so that it has a soft transition. So basic objects have always the same structure for how they are lit. So let's make that structure, okay? I'm just gonna explain the, the basic of how the this would work if it would be a sphere. We select a, a basic color for it, right? Mm -hmm. Then, because we say that the light is on this side, we're gonna cover, of course, this side in shadow. And we have to go almost all around the, the sphere to leave a brighter spot that is where the light is hitting the hardest. If this would be laying on top of the ground, we have to grab the color of the ground, maybe make it a little bit redder because the color bounces between the object and the ground. Yeah. Now we're gonna, of course, put a shadow in there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The shadow, of course, and that is a technicality, but it also always helps, will get a little bit lighter when it gets away from the object. Mm -hmm. Right? And in this object, we're gonna have two more elements that always help. So I'm gonna select the layer. We're gonna put a specular reflection. That is the point that directly reflects the light. And we're gonna have a bounce color from the ground. So if the ground is gray, we are gonna take the color of the carrot and kinda throw it to the light and also to the gray. And we're gonna pass just when it goes to the ground. That is the bounce light. So that is the basic structure of the of the object. That is what we are going to the to the carrot right now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the carrot. I'm gonna create a layer under the carrot, and again select something like the ground color. 
but we're gonna make it darker and a little bit red. Let's put some reflected light on this carrot, okay? okay? For that, we're gonna grab the shadow sure. color, okay. just make it a little bit desaturated and lighter. So I'm gonna select the carrot, and with this one, we gotta be careful because we don't want to have it like right on the border because then it's gonna make it look like it's floating. Yeah, I know, it's never on the border. It's exactly. a bit on the middle, right? Exactly, like kinda around here. This mm. is the shadow that bounces from the floor to the shadow of the carrot. Don't put too much of it because otherwise your carrot is gonna start look like metallic. The reflected light can never be brighter than the main light. And now let's do the specular. Go, this time don't set desaturated as much go a bit higher and we're gonna really push it to the yellow and because it's a cone we're going to make a triangle shape exactly a triangle but don't think too much of it as a triangle at the start just think of it as a line that goes through the carrot and it just casually makes it a bit thicker on the back of the carrot just a bit thicker we're gonna do the occlusion shadow and that is the occlusion when two objects meet, for example, is, is the shadow that you see in between your fingers or if you just put the two hands together, that shadow that creates very dark in the middle, that is the occlusion shadow. For that one, we're gonna select the shadow color and really go dark. We're gonna desaturate it a little bit and go almost to black. Uh-huh. And now carefully, let me lower the opacity of the sketch just a little bit more so that I don't get confused. We are gonna pass it through the border but this one is really really subtle, okay? Uh -huh. On the carrot? Yes, and we're gonna also put it on the shadow because it affects both sides, it affects the carrot that is on top of the table and the table that is under the carrot. But before we continue, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video and that is Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector that not only protects your screen but also it helps with other things. For example, it diminishes the amount of reflections that you have in your screen. And of course, the reason why most artists love this thing is because it gives you better traction when you're dragging your Apple Pencil on top of your screen. Anya and me both use Paperlike on our iPads and it really helps to give it a much better feeling when we are working on this thing. So the first thing after I got my iPad was that I wanted to get a Paperlike and I loved it ever since. So if you haven't tried Paperlike or any screen protector on your iPad, believe me, go down there in the link in the description, get yourself a Paperlike and truly you're gonna feel the difference and really not want to use your iPad ever again without the screen protector. Thank you very much Paperlike for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's continue with the painting. And now let's do it also on the shadow. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna create another layer in this case because I don't want us to risk the beautiful shadow that we made. Let's grab the shadow color and again make it almost black. And let's go under the carrot. I'm gonna increase the size of the brush the farther back I move, okay? okay. So look look at me how, how I do it. I'm gonna start very thin, but the more back I go, the thicker I make it because the circumference of the carrot gets bigger. So let's create a new layer and instead of locking the transparency on the leaf, this time we are going to make it a clipping mask. So we're gonna tap on it and click clipping mask. This means that now if we choose let's say another color and we're gonna paint on top it will not go out of the leaf even though mm -hmm. uh, we're, I'm painting outside. Now for this one I recommend that we first make a gradient from top to bottom because leaves usually get a little bit greener on the tips so let's make first a gradient that goes from the of the leaves to the bottom of the leaves and now we're gonna paint some nice and healthy new leaves new leaf on the top something like this all right now we're gonna give shape to the leaf. Okay. The way that we are going to do that 
is because is before we're gonna imagine what is the shape of the leaf of course we cannot paint it without imagining how does this leaf look in 3d of course you can just choose whatever shape you want for this thing but in the case of my leaf i'm gonna imagine that the shape is something like this okay And now we're gonna paint, just like we painted the carrot, imagining where would the light hit in this case. Wait, which one are we painting now? The... The shadow. Which shadow? Uh, all of this that we did was just a small gradient to give variety of, of color to the leaf. Yeah. Now we're gonna create the shadow that gives it 3D shape. I'm gonna create a little bit for the small leaf, but not the next one. Yes, something like that. Really? And now, okay. because it's too dark, I'm gonna lower the transparency of it. And let's see, with and without the shadow, how much it helps. Whoa. It makes it from a 2D flat object into a 3D one. Now you can see, if you remove also the gradient, how much it helps to bring life to it because it has more color variety, right? That is so cool. So with the gradients, the gradients are like a layer of, of beauty to it mm. and the shadow adds a layer of 3D to it. How do we know that this one doesn't have a project uh, reflected light from the floor and the carrot does? And the reason why is because... This one is not touching the floor. Exactly. So let's create that specular light. I'm gonna create a new layer on top of everything, clipping mask. And this is going to be the specular of the carrot. I'm going to choose a very wide yellow. And I'm going to imagine where the light would be, where the light would hit this thing. And I think that mine would be right here. And it would probably slide a little bit to here. I'm going to create a nice, nice, very sharp specular here, here, and here. Maybe this last one doesn't get it. You can erase the extension. If it was too much, for example, you can also, of course, erase the lower part until you reach the amount that you want. Let's grab the smudge tool. And this is a very essential tool for painting. I like to use from the favorites, the smudge cream. What this smudge brush will do is that it will soften everything so that it softens the shape that I made because I don't want it made out of shiny plastic. I want it to be a little bit rougher than that. So I go from the borders to the inside until I reach the roughness that I am happy with. And if, for example, you really like how the speculars look, you can even duplicate the layer. That is the beauty of this workflow. And I definitely recommend it to everybody. It's my favorite work workflow. How is your carrot doing? Terrible. No, come on, it's a beautiful carrot. Love your carrot. <laughs> Liar. No, 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 it's good. It's a good carrot. It's a good carrot, right? My friend comes, he has to lie. <laughs> we're gonna leave the layers on the first one just in case that we need them, okay? And we are gonna move this guy and put it somewhere around there. Of course, the trick is to transform it enough that people don't notice that it's the same leaf. I think it is time for us to make eyes on this carrot. We're gonna create a new clipping mask on top of the main carrot and we're gonna make some cute eyes. This looks like a shy carrot. This is something that always makes eyes cute. Under the the eyes put a little bit reflective light and we are almost done the only thing that we need is the little lines on the carrot lower the opacity and what i'm gonna do now is make not only the light but to feel like there are little holes we are done this is the last last thing i'm gonna duplicate this thing mm -hmm. i'm gonna one grab the one below lock the opacity make it almost white yeah, I'm painting these ones that are below. Yeah, and just put it next to the to the other one so that it looks like it is. You see now it gives the effect that it is a little hole. Done. Done, done. 
So here we are with our carrots, guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video, that you like how the paintings came along. And also, if you were following the video, that you also like the results from your, your own carrots. <laughs> I actually really like how Anya's came out. I love the Aww. way that she did the leaves in here. So, Thank you. So yeah, I honestly, I think that now I'm gonna use your method of painting leaves. I cannot believe that after doing just one exercise, this is the result. It's just mind blowing. It is not as hard as people think. For some reason, people think that digital painting is much harder than what it actually is. So, so yeah, super proud of you. Oh, thank you. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching it till the end and I'll see you on the, the next, next video. video.